Okay, think about how much time and research you did before you purchased your last car. And then compare that to how much research and time you put into checking out medical opinions you got from your doctor. My guest today is Dr. Pam Popper, and she's going to share with us how we can take responsibility for our medical care and where we can go to research before we make important decisions. Dr. Pam Popper is a public policy expert, and she's been featured in many films like Forks Over Knives and Processed People. Welcome to Happiness Adventure. I'm Lisa, and together we'll explore ways to cultivate real joy in our lives. Tell us a little bit about your organization and what you do. We're trying to encourage people to do the same thing with health that they do with everything else, okay? So, so let me tell you, I teach by analogy. So I never met anybody who says, I, I'll tell you why I live in my house. I got in the car with the realtor and I said, I'm stupid about real estate, so just tell me where I'm going to live. Nobody buys a house that way, right? And I've never said to somebody, boy, that's a nice new car you have. And they go, yeah, well, I really don't like it, but the salesman says it's the one I'm supposed to drive. You know? So, so what we do when we make other important decisions is we look into things first. And so what we teach people to do is when confronted with information about anything, a diet, a supplement, um, a procedure, a screening test, a drug you're going to take, whatever, you say, unless it's an emergency, I'm going to check this out first, and then I will make my decision after I've done some research, and I will then tell my doctors, nurses, whoever, what it is that I'm going to do. And if people would do that, they would avoid jumping in and doing what they're told, and then looking back and saying, gosh, if I'd known then what I know now, I never would have done that. And it's just as important to do this with diet and supplements as it is with medical procedures, because there are people who have been harmed hurt in major ways by adopting a paleo diet, blowing out their kidneys, or a keto diet, and ending up with cancer, because it takes a while for the really terrible things that happen from these diets to happen, that will say, I never would have adopted this diet if I'd known that it was so harmful, but you know, my neighbor lost 30 pounds, I thought it was okay. So anyway, we help people learn how to sort out information so they can make smart decisions, and a lot of times those smart decisions end up being diet and lifestyle change because as it turns out, it's the best way to address things like blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, and all the things that we spend most of our healthcare dollars on and that you and I spend most of our time talking about. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. Like you said, when you make that analogy, we put so much research and time into much more simple decisions that don't mm -hmm. have the repercussions on our health and happiness, but um, they right. abdicate our control when it comes to our health. Sometimes the way that this all feels to a person who's challenging authority, if you want to call it that, is the person is, is offended at it, which would not be the case anywhere else. And again, using an analogy, um, we're in a really wonderful location here and our landlord is terrific and I like him and he's responsive and he keeps the property well and the whole nine yards. And recently we renewed our lease. And so as much as we have a good relationship with this guy, I like him, the guy that owns the building and runs the place, I still read the lease, right? And it wasn't because... I don't like the landlord. It's not because I don't trust the landlord. It's because it was a lot of money. So what do you do when something's important? You pay attention and you read the lease and then you sign your name. You don't just sign it and say, oh, any, any questions I might have about this, it would offend the person who put the document in front of me. So, so just becoming informed consumers is, is so important, very important. I know you said there isn't one place we can go there, but what are some places we can go to check things out? Um, well, again, the internet, if you know what you're looking for and, um, and looking for just simple tools, like you can use Google and, and if you just insert this little term research study. So let's say that somebody says, um, everybody's vitamin D deficient, which is not true. Mo almost nobody is vitamin D deficient. That was all made up by a doctor who made it up, really, this whole idea of an ep epidemic of vitamin D deficiency. Okay, so if you just start looking at that, you could Google vitamin D research studies. Vitamin D, there is no such thing as deficiency, just the opposite, and look for research studies. Um, you can start reading about this and figuring out what's going on. In fact, when you do these types of searches, a lot of times our stuff comes up. 
Um, and we put out, uh, there are 2,000 free videos posted on my YouTube channel. And um, my newsletter is free. So there's a ton of material out there, even from us. I mean, we're content creators and we charge for it, but we put out a lot of free content. And you'll start to be able to look into things. And one thing leads to another to another. So when I'm doing this kind of investigatory work myself, uh, when somebody, uh, when I decide to write an article about um, vitamin D. Um, let's, uh, that's what I start doing. I start chasing down leads. It's like being a detective. And it actually is pretty fun once you start doing it. It's one of the reasons I love my job because I track this stuff down for a living. It's what I get to do every day. Um, so the, the, the internet is a great resource provided you just don't take everything at face value. Again, you've got to maintain that questioning attitude about things and you can get to the bottom of it. Unfortunately, the way that people see all the information out there is it's all conflicting and it's good, it's bad, my expert, your expert. And so people interpret that because they want to interpret it this way. It must be okay to do anything because something that's prohibited today will be on the okay list tomorrow. Look at what's happening with, happening with the keto and the paleo and all those kinds of diets. So here's what I tell people. First of all, there is no one source to send people to. Because you shouldn't even really, but I'm not a guru. You don't, you don't basically say, well, Pam Popper says that it's okay. You have to learn a filtering method so that you get away from the, he said, she said, my expert, your expert. I read a book and then you read a book and I went to this website and then you went to a website. My doctor says, well, my doctor says something else. And that's the way this gets discussed. So what we have to have is a filtering method for information. Um, and so we use criteria and we teach our people to use criteria. So the first thing, now let me just give you some examples that we can all agree on. Let's look at conflicts of interest. And you know, you can look at a study, for example, you can just Google the people who did the study and find out what they're up to. Oh my gosh, this guy's written four books on this topic. He really wants to show that this is a good thing, right? Because this helps sell books. Or this person works for uh, the meat institute or the dairy uh, industry or that sort of thing. So that's the first thing, conflicts of interest. You have to factor it in. The second thing is storytelling. There is no end to the storytelling. I mean, people get online and they say, listen, I stood on my hands and walked around downtown Columbus and ate chocolate from 12 to two every day and I lost 40 pounds, right? Let's just assume the story is right, but the likelihood that that's gonna happen to you not so much. Um, another thing is people confuse correlation with cause and effect relationship. Um, they, because two things exist at the same time, a good example is the, the craze about plastic bottles. Plastic bottles are increasing, cancer is increasing, plastic bottles must cause cancer. So, so these are a few of the types of things that you have to learn how to filter so that you can look at information and instead of jumping off the cliff and saying, oh my gosh, I read it online or a doctor said it, it must be right. You say, well, it's interesting. I'm gonna look at this a little further and then I'll decide if it's something that I will take seriously or not. And that's very important. How do we look at it more seriously? So say I hear a study that says plastic bottles equal cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this next step for me to go check that out? Was that conducted by the glass bottle people or was mm -hmm. it? you know, a, a causation versus correlation. How do I educate myself? I'll tell you, the first thing to do is assume that it's wrong. It's called falsifying the hypothesis. And Dr. Karl Popper, no relation to me, by the way, a very important philosopher and scientist who lived in the UK a long time ago, um, said that if people would do that, instead of assuming everything they see is right, like try to prove it wrong, and if it survives that, it's probably right, okay? So some things to do, you mentioned one, let's just look at who funded this study and who are the people that wrote it. Um, let's look at the opposite. So something as simple as Googling the opposite, plastic bottles do not cause cancer and see what pops up. And a lot of times when people do this, they say, um, well, I, I looked at it both ways. Plastic bottles cause cancer and plastic bottles don't cause cancer. And there are tons of studies on either side, which really tells you the issue isn't as determined as the person might say it is. Um, learning how to read the abstract of the study. 
so that you see, for example, um, people will say, this is a poisonous chemical that's in such and such a food or whatever, and it increases your risk of cancer by 75%, but you find out that it's expressed in relative rather than absolute terms. It really um, it causes an increased cancer risk of one-tenth of 1%, one and it's hardly worth worrying about, right? So you just have to start with the idea that the new thing that you just heard is probably not right. And if it survives your looking at it that way, maybe it has some merit. And this would keep people from just swaying. I call it swaying in the breeze. Like today I believe this thing and tomorrow I believe something else. And then somebody else tells me something else. And it's like, okay, I've changed my mind three times in three days and I'm completely ungrounded. I might as well eat steak and French fries because none of the rest of this is making any sense to me. Yeah. I have one last question that we ask everybody and it's how, um, like, what are you doing right now to cultivate joy in your life? Reading and running and uh, yoga and uh, spending time with friends. Um, just connecting with people. And I'm, so, you know, it, I'm 62 years old, so I'm more interested in connecting with people because I recognize how transient this all is. So I would say maybe that's the biggest thing is I'm spending more time uh, with people. That's so neat. Well, thank you for being so generous with your time for us. I really, really appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you. We just heard from Dr. Pam Popper some surprising research, but the bottom line is she wants us to make informed medical decisions, whatever we decide to do. The links to her resources are in the description box right below this video. And on her YouTube channel, you can see two new videos every single week. In the comment section, let me know what are some places that you go to research things that are important for your health and happiness. Over on happinessadventure.com, you can sign up for our free newsletter, including a booster to help you increase your happiness through simple exercises that you can do every day in under two minutes. And I look forward to seeing you soon for our next happiness adventure. <laughs>